So welcome everybody to the webinar, Career in Transportation Engineering. Uh, myself, Pankaj, and I'll try and make sure that, you know, uh, you get a good understanding of uh, what are the various avenues in transportation, as well as uh, what are the key ingredients or skill set that you need in order to succeed, not just in transportation, but any career that you choose uh, uh, as you move forward uh, in your life. So that's, uh, that's my aim for today. If you have a notebook or a pen, something that you can take notes, that would be really valuable to you. So that during the course of this uh, webinar, you can take notes. And if you have any queries, you can always come back at the end of it. This is what I kind of aim to cover. So aim of transportation itself, uh, avenues in transportation, career in transportation engineering and uh, where you can gain that experience. You know, what kind of firms are out there, which are there specifically. Uh, and uh, by no means, uh, you know, uh, what I'm covering is uh, like 100%, you know, it's more like 80, 85% of what all goes on in transportation engineering. And finally, the key ingredients to make it big, basically. Aim, so what do you suppose is aim of any transport, you know, and it's it's quite simple moving anything from point A to point B, you know, it could be people, it could be vehicle, it could be uh, material, cargo, anything. And what then, you know, what is the aim of transportation uh, itself? And it, it is to support or provide necessary infrastructure to achieve the, that particular movement from point A to point B. So it could be a road, it could be, uh, you know, it could be a, as simple as uh, airports, uh, sh ports, uh, just as, as simple as a bus shelter. So all this is part of the transportation infrastructure. And as transportation engineers, you are going to design some of these. If you get a chance in your career to do that, you. Uh, more than likely you will fall under some of these avenues that we're going to talk about. So transportation planning, traffic engineering, highway roadway engineering, pavement engineering, airport engineering, railway, metro, bridges is also there, ports, and ITS, intelligent transportation system. So uh, there is a reason why I kept transportation planning at the very beginning, because anything you want to start with any 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 project or anything uh, of that matter if you want to start with you typically start with planning that's what this is all about transport if you get into a career where you are a transportation planner what it will entail for you is that you are looking at really macro level planning you know very high level planning you are dealing with citywide planning you know you could be dealing with uh, even district wide planning or even, uh, you know, uh, statewide planning. This all falls under transportation uh, uh, that I'm specifically talking about. So you could be, you know, and for planning, you need a lot of data. You need historical data, social data, economic data, cities, rights, everything, you know. So uh, people, you need data about people, about movement, where they're going to go from point A to point B. And with the data, what you need is you need to be able to put that into some form of mathematical modeling for it to make sense. So what you're doing is you're predicting, basically, you're taking the data, uh, current data, possibly, or if you don't have a current data, you're make, going to make some assumptions. So again, I'm, I'm simplifying transportation planning to an extent where uh, you know, uh, it's, it's much more complex than this. So uh, I'm, I'm just for this audience sake and just for the sake of making sure that, you know, we are covering uh, uh, a lot of this uh, in a very short time. I'm going to be sticking to some very high level concepts only. So these mathematical modeling, once they take up the data, you know, uh, uh, you got to, you, it gives you some predictions about the future. So where the road needs to be, how many lanes, uh, uh, probably not how many lanes, but how many roads you need, what kind of roads you need, subarterial, arterial, uh, you know, uh, uh, between cities, uh, intercity, intracity, all those things. 
And one of the models that is very popular in uh, transportation planning, and that's the only one I'm covering today, is traffic uh, travel demand modeling, TDM, or four-step uh, method. That's also one of its name that it's called. And these are the four steps, you know, trip generation. So where the trips are getting generated, you know, uh, mode choice, what kind of mode people are uh, taking, trip distribution, how would you distribute those trips? When I say trips, I mean, you know, if you go from your home to your office or to your university, that's one trip, you know, that's a trip that you're making. Or if you go to a shopping center or a mall or some, uh, you know, remote location just for the weekend, those are all trips that you're making, you know, trip assignment. So all this forms part of transportation planning. Your day-to-day -day job would be to work on these models, to work on, uh, you know, and you'll be using various softwares like Cube, like uh, Visum, uh, you know, and there are many other softwares out there as well. But it's a very mathematics-driven career, I would say. So you need to have good uh, mathematical skills. So if you are someone who has not had that up until now, and you believe that you want to go here, I would say get some fresher refresher courses through online videos or something and uh, try to prepare in advance before you go into your master's. Or even if you are into your master's, try to see if you can audit some courses or get some courses that can give you that mathematical edge. You know, Traffic engineering, this is uh, the field I'm currently working in. And, uh, you know, uh, you'll, uh, you'll come across traffic flow theory a lot in traffic engineering. So, again, transportation, you got to remember, is a vast field. And I'm covering about 70-80% of the regular, uh, you know, avenues that you see in transportation. So, uh, coming back to traffic, traffic flow theory. Now, this all deals with your basic laws of physics. So, if you understand the laws of physics well, and, uh, you know, then you will understand traffic flow theory as well. Uh, you, you have speed, density, volume, travel time, headway, spacing, all those fun stuff you will see and you will come across, you know, capacity, level of service. So uh, when you see capacity, uh, it, it's basically the roadway capacity, you know. Uh, so some of the projects that I've worked on, uh, for example, traffic uh, studies that you typically need to do, uh, you'll need to see that, you know, there are developers, builders that typically would need a traffic study because the government or the uh, Ministry of External uh, uh, Environmental and Forest basically would need that kind of a study to see how much traffic is getting generated due to your development, you know. So, very, uh, or when you are doing some kind of SEZ is coming up, or I've worked on projects that had like, you know, 5,000, 10,000 acre new townships are coming up. So, for that, transportation planning was the first step. And then the second step was for us traffic engineering, you know. Uh, so, this is more micro, that was more macro. I hope you're understanding that. Signal design is also part of this, intersection studies are part of this. And then there are various traffic studies that you would be doing in your career, you know. And these are really interesting uh, traffic studies that you come up with. You see something that is tangible. You see something that can have a lot of effect based on your study, like parking studies are there. Traffic impact analysis is extremely common. What I, uh, common. What I was telling you before about developers wanting, uh, you know, they basically developing that. Uh, any uh, land bank or any parcel they have, uh, they will need a traffic impact analysis. Congestion studies are typically done on, uh, you know, uh, really uh, major arterials or major highways, roadways. Tollway studies, any kind of tollway is coming, you want to understand the traffic that will come to that particular tollway. If uh, it will be, uh, you know, if it will be uh, economical or even uh, prudent for the uh, tollway operator to invest in building that roadway. Those kind of studies are done. Congestion studies, tollway studies, pedestrian studies, extremely important and crucial in now, uh, in today's time. You'll see that uh, in developed world, uh, pedestrian studies are becoming more and more important. They are grasped, uh, even cycle studies, cyclist studies or cycle studies that are done, cycle track studies. So adding cycle tracks throughout 
the uh, roadway network. So this is getting a lot of action in today's uh, times. So if you are into a career of traffic engineering, you would be typically dealing with all this. You know, signages is also part of traffic engineering. At the same time, it's also part of highway design. So a lot of these are not like you know, if you are a traffic engineer, you would not be doing into transportation planning. It's really not like that. You know, you could be dealing with two, three, or four, or even more of these. Uh, avenues that I talk about today, you know, so geometric design is really uh, the backbone of highway design. So uh, like vertical alignments, horizontal alignments, you will go through terms like side distances. So again, laws of physics, uh, basic, that's your basic. And based on it, you're traveling at a particular speed. So you need to design a highway or a roadway uh, to be comfortable enough for the driver to traverse that, you know. So uh, if you are in a highway, uh, if you get into this field, uh, you would be designing roads, you would be also designing, uh, you know, you'd be working with bridge engineers, uh, say, for example, uh, you know, bridge engineering itself is a vast field, you know, you could be dealing with a lot of different kinds of bridges. Today, I'm not covering that in detail over here, or even uh, superficially, I'm not covering that because it tends to fall under structural as well. Uh, and uh, but I have seen transportation engineers, civil engineers who are in transportation also start designing bridges and vice versa. So bridge engineers also I've seen and a lot of my friends have designed roadways and highways as well. They came from a structural background, purely structural engineering, and they took few bridge engineering courses and that helped them to get into bridge engineering. So if you are really interested in bridges, you can also try, uh, I would strongly suggest that you look at, uh, you know, uh, uh, you look at getting some knowledge about highway and if you can get your hands on uh, uh, designing uh, roadways and highways, that would be really good. Roadway marking is also part of this. Hydraulics, uh, you know, strong design, strong drainage design. Uh, you, especially for bridges, uh, there are roadways and uh, people would be, uh, I mean, uh, you will need to design for a crossing over. So bridges, uh, culverts, minor bridges, major bridges, all of that would fall under this. Wet and dry utilities, again, I mean, uh, while I was designing projects in US uh, and uh, when I came back and I started designing projects in India as well, roadway projects, I found out that, you know, uh, other than strong drainage, uh, our highway engineer is not really uh, required to do wet and dry, other wet utilities. Wet utilities, other wet utilities would be uh, your sewage and your, uh, uh, you know, water, water lines. So typically these get designed by MEP engineers in India. So, uh, but if you're able to, it gives you a, uh, it gives you, uh, you know, a, uh, you are a notch above your competition. So it gives you that edge basically. So I would suggest that anytime uh, you are into one avenue, try to understand what other, uh, in your own team, what other folks are doing and try to see if you can also learn that. You know, it's always good to have an engineer who has a niche in one particular area, but at the same time, he has knowledge about other areas, you know? And as you want to rise up in your organization, you would want to see that, uh, you know, it becomes extremely necessary and important that uh, whoever that manager is, he understands not just his niche area, but also other areas. That's how he can work with other divisions as well and manage them if he needs to. So uh, we talked about minor, major bridges, you know, all of that. Uh, next in line automatically is the pavement engineering because uh, Again, I've seen highway engineers do this pavement design and pavement engineers do highway design as well. In India, I would say there is a dearth of good pavement engineers. Now, I know a lot of people do pavement design and I'll tell you the way they do it is, there is, you know, there's a software, there is some guidelines given by IRC, you plug in the numbers, you get a result. So it's like that. So, uh, you know, if you have a system in place and if you put in garbage in, garbage out, that's what you'll get. So the kind of engineers that are there, uh, it's it's more like them, you know, where uh, they're not thinking too much, 
you know, they're not spending enough time understanding uh, what they're designing for. Uh, so for example, uh, pavement and geotechnical to some extent go quite hand in hand because geotechnical is uh, understanding about soil mechanics, uh, study of soils, the properties, properties of your materials, aggregates, asphalts, concretes in this case, and uh, more, you know, much more than that. So um, you really need to get into, if you want to make a difference and if you want to be that uh, person where, you know, the industry is going to go after, I would strongly suggest you master your materials, especially if you're going into pavement engineering. You master your materials. What do I mean by that? You try to understand how the materials, you know, you really need to study and understand the behavior of materials. Now, this is not an exact science like, uh, you know, uh, traffic or transportation planning or traffic engineering, which is governed by laws of physics, you know. This is more empirical in nature. So with uh, through experimentation, they've come up with that, okay, this material in this particular scenario behaves in this way. So it's more empirical, you know. So uh, studying that behavior of materials is extremely important. And uh, generally speaking, there are just two types of pavements out there. There could be, there are more and there could be, but I'm just covering the most typical ones. Flexible and rigid. Flexible is asphalt concrete pavement and rigid is your general Portland cement concrete pavement. Uh, you are always going to design for a particular life. So flexible pavements tend to have like five to seven years life and rigid pavements typically you would design for 20 to 30 years. You know, Overlays are just basically overlaying. So all these terminologies, I'm throwing them at you. So you get a gist of whether this is for you or whether this is not for you. And uh, if, for example, tomorrow you go to an interview and uh, you know you are able to, before that, if you are able to go through some of these things, it gets you in a mode where you know you are better prepared than any other candidate. So this will help you with that. If you're already in this career, what I'm trying to say is that make sure you study your materials, make sure you understand where the IRC standard itself are coming from, where the ASHTO standards are coming from, you know, where the Ashfall Concrete Institute, uh, where, how they're designing all these things. So go to the back of, uh, you know, laboratory uh, experiments and try and understand that. Uh, now we have covered so far transportation planning, traffic engineering, highway design, uh, or I would say geometric design, and uh, pavement engineering or pavement design as well. So airport, to some extent, so what has happened so far is that you, you were designing for a particular vehicle. So that is typically, I would say a truck or, uh, uh, you know, um, uh, a car or some, some form of a design vehicle. Now your design vehicle changes, but your steps to some extent, your basic or the logic remains the same. So in this case, your design vehicle now is an airplane, you know, so no biggie, uh, you know, uh, nothing changes. Your basics are the same. Uh, the only thing is, and I've had a good fortune of designing at least two airports uh, throughout my career uh, before changing tracks and getting into more into parking and traffic studies. Uh, so I can, and even while I was doing my master's, I had a really good professor who was, uh, you know, who, uh, who was a pilot himself, a retired uh, Air Force, uh, United States Air Force pilot, and then he was designing airports. So he covered a bunch of stuff for us. So right from planning. So this is where, you know, everything falls, comes back now. You've got to do same. You've got to start with planning. If you need an airport, you need to know uh, whether you need an airport or not. And if you're going to need an airport, best possible location. So all that would fall under planning, you know. Then comes your traffic part. Traffic is how much traffic do you think the, this potential airport is going to have or, uh, you know, so you project that, you predict and you project that data to the next 5, 10, 20, 30, 40 odd years, depending on what you're dealing with, whether it's a small airport, whether it's a private airport or whether it's commercial, large commercial airport. So traffic, air traffic, you're studying, you're studying and predicting passenger traffic, cargo traffic, if that is a requirement. And, uh, then you're designing your runway, uh, you know, taxiway, apron. Apron is nothing but you see the plane standing on, that is your apron, you know. And uh, 
believe me, this is extremely serious when you're designing an airport. You know, you got to be very, very careful. Uh, if you have gone to an airport, you will see that all the people are extremely safety concerned and they're always traveling at a certain speed. If you are in a bus and they're taking to your airplane, you'll always notice that, you know, so, uh, and there is a reason for that. It's related to safety. Otherwise it's going to be devastating if something happens, you know, so all these markings that you see on the screen itself, I'll just use a pointer. Uh, so all these markings that you see on the screen, all this, this is all designed and it has a purpose, you know, all of that. So when you're doing your runway, taxiway and aprons, you'll have all kinds of markings on them, you know. Similarly, lighting. Lighting is not what you think about. It's not your regular traffic lights or something like that. This lighting is something that is going to guide your airplanes from the sky onto the runway, from the runway to your taxiway, from the taxiway to your apron, and finally where it gets to park. So lighting is that crucial. So that's why it's also, again, very uh, extremely serious business of designing this. If you get a chance to go into airports, it's going to be a very niche career for you. Okay. What I mean by that, you, you know, you have general jobs like highway is very general. You could find a lot of companies doing this. You would have pavement designers job again. Uh, you know, if you are doing highway pavements or roadway pavements, you would uh, again, very generic job. But if you go into airports, there are a few companies that design this. Okay. So it's a generic, uh, it's a niche field and you might get paid uh, better. But at the same time, if something goes wrong in the job market, like for example, no airports needed or you, uh, it's already saturated. By the way, in India, you are going to have jobs for airport engineers for the next 20, 25 years easily because we are in a very uh, fast growing phase, I would say. Okay. So um, uh, if you are going to get into this uh, uh, career, uh, think about both aspects. You have a general where highways, you have a lot of jobs, airports, you have very few jobs. So, uh, but I would say if you get a chance, always explore these, uh, you know, uh, airport or highway or whatever traffic or transportation planning, always keep your op mind open and see if you can learn a little bit more while you're there.